Hello and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio, and I'm glad that you could join us for another segment. You know, there's some promising research for those living with non-small cell lung cancer. New investigational findings from a premier cancer meeting show potential advances in the fight against the disease. Joining us here on Health Professional Radio with more on this latest news is Dr. Roy Herbst of Yale Cancer Center and Smillo Cancer Hospital. Welcome to the program, Doctor. Uh, doctor, what is non-small cell lung cancer and how prevalent is it? Right, so, so non-small cell lung cancer is the most common type of lung cancer. Now, lung cancer is quite prevalent. It's about 200,000 deaths a year in the United States, 1.6 million worldwide. Uh, in the United States, about 85% of lung cancer is non-small cell lung cancer. And the reason we're interested in that is about 10 to 15% of the patients with non-small cell lung cancer will have abnormalities called epidermal growth factor receptor mutations in their cancer, which makes them a target for the, for the therapy I'm going to tell you about now. Was this therapy uh, part of the information that was presented uh, surrounding non-small cell lung cancer uh, medical advances this year at uh, the ASCO? Well, um, at the American Society of Clinical Oncology meeting uh, held virtually, I presented one of the plenary abstracts, so, um, you know, the, the main session. Um, this was a, a trial called ADORA. It was uh, done in partnership with AstraZeneca, a worldwide trial of 800 patients from U.S., Asia, uh, Europe, you know, all continents. And basically what this trial did is it took patients with uh, lung cancer that had been removed. And in about 30% of cases, we can actually take out the lung cancer. But even when that's done, uh, about 50 to 75% of patients will still have their cancer come back. So clearly there's an unmet need there. So what was done in this trial is we took the best therapies from the advanced disease setting of lung cancer, drugs that uh, target epidermal growth factor receptor, and we started to give them after surgery. Uh, and to this point, it had never been done. So basically what we did is we took patients, uh, they had their cancer removed, and then they received chemotherapy, which is the standard of care, um, when appropriate. Now that therapy works only a little bit. The cancer still recurs at the rates I told you. And then the patients were randomized, half received the new study drug, uh, a new targeted agent against epidermal growth factor receptor, and the rest received a control, a placebo, because as I mentioned, there was no standard of care. And we presented these data and actually showed an 83% decrease in returns, 83% in the patients who received the drug versus the control. Now, um, I was quite optimistic going into this study. Uh, the hypothesis was that uh, this targeted ag agent used earlier would work better. But this was just a phenomenal result, even for someone who's been doing this for 25 years like myself. And my colleagues were, were quite impressed, as were uh, patients. And this now affords a new opportunity to treat people with this disease to keep the cancer from coming back to the lung, to vital organs, to the brain. So uh, very excited about the, these data, as you can see. Could you expand on the significance of these findings, not just to the non-small cell lung cancer community, but to the lung cancer community as a whole? Right. Well, you know, in, in my opinion, and again, I am the, the lead investigator, but I, I believe this is practice changing because now um, at the uh, time of uh, uh, removal of the cancer, uh, the, the oncologist like myself with a surgeon and the rest of the team can actually analyze uh, the patient's tumor, uh, understand if it has this specific abnormality. And now we have a new weapon against the disease. And I can tell you, taking care of patients uh, quite often, that you know, people worry, will the cancer come back? Will it, will it cause harm, side effects? And to keep that from happening is huge. So I believe this will be practice changing. Um, certainly the trial will continue to uh, be followed for other endpoints, uh, local versus uh, distance spread, um, you know, other therapies that patients go on, quality of life, ultimately the overall survival, uh, we'll, we'll look at that in a few years. But right now, these data are so compelling uh, with, with that, that difference of 83% that I believe that uh, people will take note of it right away. Do you think that the mindset of the severity of lung cancer will change uh, based on these findings or this therapy in particular? Well, you know, lung cancer has always been a difficult to treat disease. But over the last 20, 25 years, we've developed these targeted therapies these drugs that target specific abnormalities in the cancer, uh, many of them are pills uh, taken orally. And they've been used in the most advanced setting, and they, they, they help and they improve survival. But now we're moving these to the earliest stage where we already could use uh, surgery to remove a cancer, but knowing that you know, patients could still recur because of the cancer that had already spread, 
Now these even more effective therapies, these oral therapies are being used in that new paradigm. So I think this is going to change the entire field because not only uh, this therapy that we described at the ASCO meeting, but there'll be other therapies as well. And I think right now at the time a tumor is removed early on, that tumor has to be profiled. We have to know what makes it tick. We have to analyze it you know, completely because that will allow us to then match the patient to the right drug at the right time. So very, very, very compelling, uh, these data. And I think it's going to shift uh, the entire way we, we look at uh, early stage lung cancer in the future. Where can our listeners go online and get some more information and uh, possibly find where to get some support? Well, there is a website, lvng.com, Living with Lung Cancer, and there's a great deal of information there. And of course, you know, we have information on our Yale Cancer Center, Smile Cancer Center site as well, as do many of the centers around the country. Well, doctor, thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. It's been a pleasure speaking with you, and you have a great rest of the week, okay? Uh, you too. Thank you very much. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Roy Herbst. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au.